Hello everyone, it's Dr. Madhu here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I will be speaking on structure of skin. Skin is the largest organ of the human body with surface area of 2 meter square. Skin has three parts, epidermis, dermis and hypodermis. In the word epidermis, epi means above. So it is the layer that is present above dermis. In the word hypodermis, hypo means below. So it is the layer that is present below dermis. In this model, this portion is epidermis, whereas this portion is dermis and this portion is hypodermis. Between epidermis and dermis, we can see dermo-epidermal junction. At this junction, we can see the epidermis being thrown into folds called rete ridges. Between these rete ridges, we can see dermis projecting towards epidermis as dermal papilla. Epidermis is stratified squamous keratinized epithelium, where the word stratified epithelium means that there are two or more layers of cells. And the word squamous indicates the presence of flattened cells. In addition, the word keratinized epithelium indicates that these cells contain keratin. This model represents the more zoomed out version of epidermis. From this model, we can notice that the major cell of epidermis is a keratinocyte. Keratinocytes account for more than 95% of epidermal cells. As we can see here, these are all keratinocytes. The other cells of epidermis are melanocytes, Merkel cells and Langerhans cells. These cells account for less than 5% of epidermal cells. Epidermis is further divided into four layers. From below upward, we have stratum basale, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum and stratum corneum. Coming to individual cell layers, first we have stratum basale. The word stratum basale indicates it is the basal cell layer. This layer is usually single cell layer thick and it contains cuboidal cells with large nucleus and a basophilic cytoplasm. As we move up from stratum basale, we have stratum spinosum. This layer is also called prickle cell layer or spinous cell layer due to presence of spinous cells. These cells have spinous cell margins due to intercellular adhesive structures called desmosomes which hold the cells stretched giving spine like appearance. This layer is around 8 to 10 cell layers thick. In the upper layers of stratum spinosum, granules called lamella granules or membrane bound granules or woodland bodies appear and these granules contain glycolipids, phospholipids and free sterols. As we move up from stratum spinosum, we have stratum granulosum which is also called granular cell layer. This layer is around 2 to 5 cell layers thick and the cells of this layer have keratoiling granules in addition to lamella granules. These keratoiling granules have loricrine, keratin and prophylagrin. The cells of this layer are more flattened when compared to cells of stratum spinosum. As we move up from stratum granulosum, we have stratum corneum. This stratum corneum is around 25 cell layers thick and the cells of stratum corneum are called corneocytes as they are odd due to deposition of proteins. As we move from stratum granulosum, we can see two changes. One is the nucleus disappears and the cells get even more flattened. There is an additional electron lucent cell layer between stratum granulosum and stratum corneum called stratum lucidum only in palms and soles where epidermis is thick. Appearance of keratoiline granules in stratum granulosum indicates the beginning of keratinization. So the cell layers below stratum granulosum are non-keratinized. So this zone of non-keratinized cells constitute stratum malfigi which include cell layers of stratum spinosum and stratum basale. Stem cells that have unlimited capacity to divide are present in stratum basale and these cells multiply and give rise to cells of the layers above it. As the cells move up from stratum basale towards stratum corneum, they lose their ability to divide. 
This process of cell multiplication constitutes epidermal cell kinetics. As we move up from statum basale, following changes occur in keratinocytes. These changes constitute epidermal differentiation. The cells flatten, the cells become more eosinophilic and lamella granules appear in upper layers of statum spinosum. Keratoylin granules appear in layers of statum granulosum and nucleus disappears as we move from statum granulosum to statum corneum. This model represents cells of individual layers. We have basal cell, we have spinous cell, we have granular cells and we have a corneocyte. We can see keratoylin tonofilaments that appear first in basal cells. These keratoylin tonofilaments are present in all keratinocytes except corneocyte. These keratoylin tonofilaments are dispersely arranged in spinous cells and basal cells whereas they are aggregated in granular cell layer. These keratoylin tonofilaments forms the skeletal framework for all keratinocytes and in addition to that, these keratoylin tonofilaments anchor basal cells to the basement membrane and keratinocytes to their adjacent cells. As I told before, lamella granules appear in upper layers of stratum spinosum. These lamella granules contain phospholipids, glycolipids and free sterols that forms intercellular lipids in case of stratum corneum. Then we have keratoylin granules that appear in stratum granulosum. These keratoylin granules contain prophylagrin, keratin and loricrin. This prophylagrin gets converted into filagrin which brings about aggregation of keratoylin tonofilaments. This aggregated keratoylin tonofilaments along with keratin and loricrin forms the central protein mass of cells of stratum corneum. This central protein mass of cells of stratum corneum along with intercellular lipids forms the brick and mortar model of stratum corneum. This model represents brick and mortar model of stratum corneum. The brick is compared to cells protein mass in the center and the mortar is compared to intercellular lipids. This model shows aggregation of keratoylin tonofilaments brought about by filagrin. Coming to other cells of epidermis. Other cells of epidermis are melanocytes, Merkel cells and Langerhans cells. Coming to melanocytes. Melanocytes are the dendritic cells that are present in between the cells of stratum basale. These melanocytes contain cell organelles called melanosomes. In melanosomes, synthesis of melanin occurs. This melanin imparts color to the skin in addition to providing UV protection. For every 10 basal keratinocyte, there is one melanocyte. And one melanocyte comes in contact with around 36 keratinocytes via its cell body and dendrites. This constitutes epidermal melanin unit. Then we have Merkel cell. Merkel cell is also present in between the cells of stratum basale and it acts as touch receptor. Merkel cells are almost always associated with sensory neurons. Then we have one more dendritic cell called Langerhans cell. These cells are the modified macrophages that are present in all cell layers except stratum corneum. These cells have tennis rocket shaped or club shaped granules called Birbeck granules. These cells have antigen presenting property in addition to having phagocytic property. Now coming to dermis, dermis has two parts, papillary dermis which is present above and reticular dermis which is present below. This upper dermis is called papillary dermis since it contains dermal papilla. This model represents papillary dermis. Papillary dermis is more cellular and has less dense network of immature elastic and collagen fibers. The cells of dermis are histiocytes, lymphocytes, fibroblasts and mast cells. This model represents reticular dermis which is less cellular and has more dense network of mature elastic and collagen fibers. The accessory structures of skin are its glands, hair and nail. Coming to hair, there are two types of hair. One is terminal hair and villous hair. Terminal hairs are longer, thicker and deeply pigmented and they are rooted either in deep dermis or subcutaneous tissue. 
whereas villus says are shorter thinner and lightly pigmented and they are rooted in mid dermis these terminal layers are present in androgen sensitive areas like scalp mustache beard axilla and pubes whereas villus says are present all over the body except for glabrous skin coming to glands first we have sebaceous glands sebaceous glands are almost always associated with air follicles they open into air follicles at the junction of infundibulum and isthmus these sebaceous glands secrete sebum this air follicle along with the associated sebaceous gland constitutes pilo sebaceous unit these sebaceous glands are dense over scalp face chest upper back and ano genital regions then we have sweat glands which are also called eccrine glands which open directly onto skin surface they secrete sweat these eccrine glands are present all over the body except for external auditory canal vermilion border of lips nail bed clitoris labia minora and glands pannis then we have apocrine glands which are the scent glands they either open directly onto skin surface or into air follicle above the opening of sebaceous gland they secrete apocrine sweat which is non odorous when secreted but becomes odorous when it comes to skin surface due to action of bacteria these apocrine glands are present in axilla genital and perianal areas for further updates on skin do subscribe to this channel